Have you gotten bronze players in your platinum games? Or maybe you've gotten diamond players in your grandmaster games? Well, whatever rank you are, we have Morgan Madrin on Twitter, who is a server engineer for Blizzard on the Play Overwatch team. Uh, he's a matchmaking fanatic, according to him. His views on his uh, Twitter threads are entirely his own, but he did release a thread a few weeks ago explaining the basics of MMR systems and how they work because there's a lot of confusion. A lot of people really believe that the system is out to get them and the system is against them. And they can't climb simply because of their system and their teammates. That's false. Get good. The highlight of the season four mid cycle patch for matchmaking is a pretty substantial rework of our MMR decay system. Since I can't describe the changes in detail, it's too in the weeds. It's proprietary, guys. It seemed like a good idea to go over the basics of MMR systems. All right. Buckle up, everybody. Let's learn about what MMR systems mean. Morgan says, often I get questions like, why do I have to lose MMR for a loss even if I played well? Or, why did you get rid of SR? Sorry, I lost the little Timmy voice. Why did you get rid of SR? Can't you just publish the MMR formula, et cetera, et cetera? Hopefully this addresses some of those too. So, what are MMRs and why do we care about them? One motivation is that we want to make fair matches, right? Both sides have roughly the same chance to win. In order to do this, we need some way to quantify player skill so we can make teams with the same skilled players on each side. A good starting place would be to just track a player's total wins and losses and only match players with the same number of net wins, like wins versus losses, and that is actually how the Hearthstone Arena works, at least it was back when you played Hearthstone. A lot of the first generation of match-made games back in the early 2000s did almost purely this, just wins and losses. It actually works fairly well, and this is actually pretty close to how ranked MMRs used to work in Overwatch 1. So let's say you ship a game with pure win-loss only matchmaking, and then a million people play your game and everyone plays 100 matches. An interesting question to ask is, what will that distribution of players look like? It turns out that you get a curve that looks like this funky thing, right? The vast majority of players are near the middle with a roughly even number of wins and losses, and then some players with way more net wins or net losses. This is a normal distribution, averaged out. This is the the graph you get. This makes sense to me so far. Hopefully you're following along. This is a uh, pretty fascinating result. We didn't do anything to cause it. It just emerged. This exact shape is actually dictated by a bunch of micro details, but the general shape tend to stay very closely to, to match a normal distribution. Ah, just what I said, hey? I almost failed statistics in university. I did study, oh, I did have a class on it. Uh, I passed with like 50%. I was right here. Actually, I don't know what the bell curve at my class looked like, but hey, that's a little car cue fact. I did graduate university. I'm not that stupid, but I was not a great student. Another interesting question to ask is, how many net wins separates the best and worst players? The answer is based on several things, like how many players there are and how many matches each player tends to play, but it's typically going to be a lot, like several hundred wins. How many net wins separates the best and worst? Probably several hundred. So what separates someone here versus here? Lots and lots of game difference, right? So with that in mind, let's talk about one problem with this approach, which is smurfing. Ooh, let's say a player with 200 net wins makes a new account. They start at zero net wins, and hey, they probably win their first 50 or 100 wins straight because they're a good player. In this case, we probably created about 100 stomped matches in order to get this one player to roughly where they should be. Perhaps we should have realized by the 10th or 20th win in a row that something was wrong. Let's say someone is really good at Overwatch, and they like, in a normal old, MMR system, if he makes a brand new account with zero, like, you know, this is net positive wins, net positive losses. Let's say 100 matches. Let's say he's 100 and zero. If he's a Smurf, he's going to stomp 100 matches to get back to where he was. But like he's saying, by like the 10th or 20th win, something should have been incorrect. Like the system should have a, something in place to detect a Smurf so that he can spike really fast. Or else you're going to have a lot of lopsided matches if you're going to let him if he's going to get back to his true skill level, which is all the way here, he's going to have to go through 100 matches. He's going to ruin so many games. All right. So it turns out uh, that the problem of how much do I learn about an unknown based on new information is an extremely deep problem. There's even entire fields of philosophy and math dedicated to it. This is called the Bayesian interference. This is the first time I've heard of it. Maybe we covered it in my stats class when I was in university, but this was like 12 years ago. So yeah, I'm old. I'm 30. Bayesian interference is a method of statistical inference which Bayes, Bayes theorem is used to update the probability for hypothesis as more evidence or information becomes available. Basically, 
update probability of, for a hypothesis as more evidence or information becomes available. So the probability of someone winning 100 games in a row when they're this good of a player is pretty high, but you have to update it. More information becoming available. So by the 10th or 20th win, there should be something to be like, yo, this guy's way too good. Like he should not be at this rank. So a good concrete example of this problem from another angle is actually yesterday's Boston Uprising versus Vancouver Titans Owl match. The result was surprising to many people and shows that the outcome of some matches give us more information than others. Return to center there by Sugar Free. Six to K this time around. And they've already lost two. Legion gone into K dead. I mean, it's only Bird Reef for Sugar damage. Free? Sugar Free can just clean up. This is 15 seconds to go with the Vancouver Titans. Might just hold them first. This is it. No one can touch. I mean, maybe Decay gets back. Twilight and Legion going on uh, Zen and uh, the Brick. That's it. The Vancouver Titans 3 0 the Boston Uprising, giving them their first loss of the season. An unbelievable performance from the Titans. My God. So on top of the basic win-loss counting, you actually need a lot of other systems that can recognize when a player isn't where they're supposed to be or to better predict where they should be based on partial information. I'm going to assume that there was, this was a stomp now that I'm looking back. You guys already have the info because editors put it on screen. Uh, there was a stomp, so there's not like something is wrong inherently by one single stomp. You need a lot of other systems that can recognize when a player isn't where they're supposed to be or better predict based on partial information. And that leads me to this new MMR decay change. We are just being smarter about when a player hasn't logged in for like a year and they start playing. We don't know much as much about them. We can guess they are rusty, but need to be able uh, to more quickly tell if we're wrong. And oh, just to make it clear, the system is continually decaying everyone a tiny amount and the decayed MMR isn't actually permanently lost. The amount is only noticeable if you've been gone for a long time. So there's no need to benefit or change your behavior in any way. And that's it. If you reach at the end, good job, nerds. And really from a nerd. Also, season five is going to be juicy for matchmaking. Interesting. This entire thread explained basic MMR distribution with just a win-loss system, but that's not good enough in modern days because of smurfing and everything. So he's basically just saying there's multiple systems in place, not just one based on a single stomp, but like uh, the Overwatch, MMR, and SR decay system has things in place to tell when people aren't supposed to be where they are. But so people get misled a lot of times when they view someone's profile and they see their silver and then they have like a confirmation bias if they actually played a bad game, even though like, let's say their MMR was supposed to be, you know, platinum and they're a platinum game, but their, their rank shows silver. People just get tilted. They're like, they're not where they're supposed to belong. The systems in place is like checking. Maybe they are supposed to be here, but obviously you're going to have those outliers where they really were in a, uh, in a lopsided match in a place they didn't belong. And hopefully the system is aggressive enough to be like, we think he's better because he played well, but then he just had a bad game. Now what do we like spike him down or like punt him down or like bring him back up? It's supposed to be a lot more of an aggressive system is what I was getting out from Morgan. Uh, and that's just the uh, MMR system in a nutshell, at least their new system. Uh, let me address what Morgan has said uh, later down, uh, further down. People were voicing some of the issues Blizzard had with the old SR system because like, um, he was just curious, I suppose. What was wrong with the old SR system? Everyone's like, bring SR back. So what's one gripe with it? Because everybody seems to be complaining about about uh, the new system. So he's just saying uh, handling uncertainty means giving like variable amount and people did not like that, which is true. It feels bad when you also get 20 SR for him, but then lose 30 for a loss. It's like, how did I go five and five today, but I'm down 100 SR? Because that certainly happened too. The SR system wasn't perfect, everybody. Everybody says bring it back, but the, it also had its issues. Uh, more questions from Twitter that Morgan answered. What does that mean for several accounts that got their ranked reset down a division in season four and now are locked in B5, I guess bronze five, regardless of how well they perform in the profession update. Uh, so Morgan says, so far the cases I investigate are players who at the at least at the moment, are legitimately in Bronze 5. The percentage on the rank update screen should help gauge progress. Bronze 5 is just very large. It can take a lot of matches to get out. This person said, I'm mo most interested in that curve graph. Is there a chance the team can provide us with a graph sectioned off with each skill tier? I still want to see... I still see so many people complain that GM1 feels like top 10% or 15% when it used to be top 1% or something, which is true. For some reason, a lot of uh, high-level players gatekeep a lot of the lower, lower rank players. I'm not going to name any names. I'm the, I don't add myself in that conversation. Uh, I'm pretty quiet on Twitter, I'm going to be honest. But there are people who have said, wow, like the new Grandmaster 1 feels like the old, old low GM. Like there's a lot of people in GM 1, they're boosted, blah, blah, blah. I mean, for me, just let people enjoy. If they feel good hitting GM 1, it doesn't really affect me, to be honest with you, right? If you hit your rank, congrats to you.
So if there are too many in GM1, then I guess we do have an issue like with Apex Legends right now where there's so many people hitting Masters and Predator with the new system. It kind of dilutes the achievement and it kind of like uh, messes up an, a regular distribution because there's a disproportionate amount of people at a higher rank, which s signals something is wrong. So don't get me wrong. There is some, there's an issue with that. So I think people are anecdotally or I guess uh, by their, their, their feeling that there's more GM1s than uh, they probably deserve, that people probably deserve. Morgan says, I hear yeah, I would love to share this out when I can, maybe in a blog, but GM1 is actually an incredibly thin fraction of 1% of the player base. Yeah, it just so happens that whatever threads you probably see on Twitter are from high rank players because you follow like a streamer circle and they like each other's stuff. There are so many Overwatch players. And like, you know, you're cherry picking one section of social media where there's a lot of highest level players complaining and they complain the most and they're the loudest, right? Vocal minority, true. Is your MMR carried over from console to PC through cross? Crossplay? No. We look at your other MMRs to figure out where to start them, but after that, they're completely separate. I have well over 500 wins since Overwatch 2 star, uh, started from playing daily, so theoretically, I am being matched with people who also have that. I al uh, I do also get those streaks of wins and losses, so what this does this change fix some of that? Do these changes in any way reflect quick play? So Morgan says, yes, these changes affect every game mode. This won't necessarily make it less likely for you to play with or against someone who is just coming back from a long break, but we are trying to recalibrate those players faster, so that should still help. This didn't explain why no SR system. Ah, you're right. I didn't specifically address that. Morgan says, the reason alluded to here is that handling our uncertainty properly meant we could give variable amounts of SR per match, but players just like that. Oh, she so was answering the, uh, this is the same answer as before. That's why they got rid of the SR system. Basically, people didn't like 20 for a win, 30 for a loss is one example of SR, which I agree with. I'm actually indifferent to both systems. I don't mind either. I have a different perspective since I'm, I am in the top, you know, whatever fraction of GM1 players, top 500. Uh, it would be nice to see like an actual number once you reach that, but this is such like a like a 0.01% problem. It's not a big deal for most players. Chasm, ah, Chasm's like a top ball player. I had him for a video, a ball text video back in the day. So why not at least add SR for GM1? Hey, see, that's basically what I said. If you've reached the highest rank in the game, surely you incentivize you to play more. There's something more to work with. The top 500 system doesn't feel the same as being rank one at the start of the season. It's very different from the end. I agree with this again, but this is such a small problem i do hope they add it for for us a small minority of players but like hopefully morgan and team listen this is a fine question i agree with that juzu is another uh overwatch player i have him actually as my widow guest for a widow video on the main channel can we expect any changes in ranked in terms of climbing and ranking up like adding sr numbers back visible rank icon decay for gm so people don't camp the rank anytime soon also can we have any answers on why previous seasons of Overwatch 1 was deleted? I actually want an answer for this too. They only had like season 36, 35, 34 for legacy players. It's kind of annoying. I wish they just showed it all. Like why not? I don't think he got answered though, unfortunately. Um, they did. He did answer why they don't add SR back. Visible rank icon in game would be nice too. Uh, and decay would be good, but this again, that is a small 0.01% problem. Uh, it's probably not on the high priority list, but I hope they're listening. So like, you know, I, I, I don't uh, discourage or, or any of my like colleagues, streamer colleagues to, to ask these kinds of types of questions. So that's good. That is basically an explanation of the MMR system, why they got rid of SR, what a normal MMR system decay, uh, what normal distribution looks like for normal MMR systems, what it's like when you have multiple systems in place, AKA Bayesian inter uh, inferences. Wow, did I say interference earlier? I might've Bayesian inferences. And yeah, a little lesson in math. That's why they're engineers and you're not. And yeah, thank you, Morgan. And thank you all for listening. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding and go play ranked and don't look at other people's profile and play your best and do damage if you're a support. Peace.